Hey, Internet. Eric here. Um, back for a movie review for, with you guys tonight. And I'm not going to lie, and I'm already going to say it right away, it's one of my favorite sci-fi horror movies of all time. Um, when I first saw this as a kid, and I've loved it ever since. Couldn't tell you how many times I've seen it. Um, and I enjoyed it every fucking time I've seen it. And right away, I'll just tell you, we're talking about Critters. Critters came out in 86, and it stars um, Scott Grimes and M. Emmett Walsh and Billy Greenbush. Um, Billy Zane, one of his first roles. Um, Don Opper, Terrence Mann. Um, probably the most well-known name is probably D. Wallace, um, but she was D. Wallace Stone at this time. But D. Wallace was known for The Howling and E.T. and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, um, Cujo. And then she grew, went on to do um, Rob Zombie's Halloween, and I believe she was in um, Lords of Salem with him. I'm not sure. Anyways, um, uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I do have to say I do give spoilers at times when discussing either the plot or um, certain scenes. Um, so, But again, it's from 1986, so hopefully you've at least seen it or heard about it so anyway the bla the basic plot of critters are these little creatures here are called krites and they have escaped a prison asteroid they hijacked a spaceship and they're flying you know flying away and I I guess it's like the intergalactic police or something or other like that they have um, called in the bounty hunters and one of the bounty hunters right there Call in the bounty hunters to either bring back the krites or destroy them. And um, the krites end up having to land in rural Kansas and near the home of the Brown family. Um, D. Wallace Stone and uh, Billy Greenbush are the parents. Scott Grimes and Nadine Vanderveld are the, the, the children, the siblings. And then there is, their handyman is Charlie, the town drunk, wonderfully played by Don Opper. And basically, it's the Brown family trying to survive the attack of the critters, or the krites, while the bounty hunters show up to take care of business. And that's the basic plot. And like I said before, I fucking love this movie. My mom introduced this to me. And yes, there are four of them, which we will get into eventually. Um, introduced this to me when I was very young. My mom was real big into introducing to me to horror and sci-fi horror. I absolutely loved it then, and I love it now. Um, first off, the design of the critters is just fantastic. And they look like these little hedgehogs with three rows of razor sharp teeth. You got the blood red eyes, and what uh, <clears throat> how they get around because they have like little legs, little legs, and little arms. You can kind of see here. See, so basically, if they walk, they, you know, they they're not going to walk real fast. So what they do is they like to curl themselves into a little ball and roll around. And what they can also do is they can shoot out like a po poisonous thorn to um, to stick into their victim to knock them out so they can eat them. Um, but what is great about Critters, it's a good, fun sci-fi um, horror movie. I, like I said, I loved the look of the Critters, which is done by the Kyoto Brothers. And you might not know who the Kyoto Brothers are, but if you know sci-fi horror, they went on to do the effects and then help film and write Killer Clowns from Outer Space. So they know, you know, cheesy sci-fi horror. Um, first off, let's talk about the acting. Um, Billy Greenbush as the father, as a, what's his name, Jay. He is a, first off, all the actors, they are a believable family unit. They are a loving family from the 80s, you know, in the country. You have the stern father who wants to make sure his son doesn't want to grow up to be a slacker and he's an over he's overprotective of his his daughter especially when um billy zane the boyfriend goes over you know comes over to eat dinner he just gives him that dirty look all the time and then scotty grimes is really good as you know the troublemaking son nadine vanderveld is good as the uh, the spoiled brat uh, older sister um not a big fan of d wallace stone's performance though she in the in the beginning she's fine She's this loving mother, 
But in the end, when all the critters are attacking and everyone's getting injured, she's just screaming at the top of her lungs, and it, it gets very annoying. So she's about 50-50. Um, we also have the bounty hunters. Now, what I love about the bounty hunters is, first off, their look. Um, I love... This is... Uh, you don't find out his name until part two, but this is Ugg. He is the leader of the bounty hunters. And I just love the look of the outfit, all the leather and the straps. Um, kind of S&M type of thing. I don't know if that's the look they were going for. But when we're first introduced to the bounty hunters, um, they're humanoid, but they have no faces. It's just like a green mold, I guess. And you, you, you find out that they have the ability to morph their face into to look um, like whatever creature, I guess, that they're going to have to, I guess, meld with society. You know, melt, mold into, mold into society with because um, they have to look humanoid. So you know, like human. So the green gel forms into a skull with blood and muscle and tissue, and it's, it's this fantastic, practical special effect. It's wonderful, and eventually it molds into a human face. And the reason, the how they do that is, you know, they're they get they learn the history of the world that they're going to, and. The lead uh, bounty hunter, who um, I'll just call Ugg, you know, even though he doesn't get named until the second one, I'm calling him, calling him Ugg as of right now. Um, he's scoping through the history and learning about Earth, and then he comes into this old this music video from uh, Johnny Steele, and a fictional singer, and he sees Johnny Steele's uh, music video. He likes the way Johnny Steele looks, so he morphs his face to look like Johnny Steele. And then his second bounty hunter, you know, his his uh, partner goes back and forth finding different people to morph into. And it's cool because one time, you know, he morphs into the body or the face of Jeff. He's one of the characters. He is a, um, a policeman who's killed by the critters. Um, and the thing is, though, when he morphs into Jeff's face, he still gets like the, he's still walking around with his neck, you know, ripped open due to the, you know, the critter bites and stuff like that. And he has to walk through a church and, while they're searching for the critters. And it's great seeing the people's reactions. So good. Um, but the bounty hunters, you know, they don't have a lot of dialogue. But they have a presence about them that shows how badass they are. And I love one of my favorite um, parts of this film is when they're trying to learn about society. Um, they're walking around and they find Jeff's uh, police cruiser and his dead body underneath. And they're trying to learn, and it's, they try to learn how to turn the ignition at the same time when they accidentally fire the, uh, the 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 shotgun that Jeff has inside, and it's a nice scene. And one of my favorite scenes is when they go into a bowling alley, trying to find you know the, the critters, and they're just walking around. Like I said, they're in this big getup while everybody else is dressed how normal people dress. They're walking around, you know, observing, and then. Um, Ugg, or Johnny Steele, whatever, sees the ball come down the ball return. And then he sees how everyone's bowling. He literally palms the fucking bowling ball and then just throws it. Throws it to the fucking pins. The pins explode. One of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. And, um, yeah, that's the Bounty Hunters. And, it, like, all the characters are great other than D. Wallace. I love Don Opper's performance as Charlie, the, the town drunk who also believes that um, aliens are out to get us by because he thinks he hears uh, frequency in his teeth fillings. So he's like a huge conspiracy theorist. And of course, since he's the town drunk, no one believes him. And then we have M. Emmett Walsh as the, as the police sheriff and his uh, dispatcher, wonderfully played by Lynn Shay. Um, love Lynn Shay. So all the characters are great. I mean, like I said, D. Wallace sucks at the end, but in the beginning she's very likable and lovable. Um, the tension is really good. It's a lot of, like, a, the scene where, um, the power is cut. So Jay, before the, for, before they know what the critters are, goes down into, um, the shelter area, like the storm shelter. And he's looking around for the fuses, and he thinks, you know, he sees a rat or whatever, but it ends up being, you know, one of the critters. And it jumps on Jay, and it digs its fucking, you know, three rows of teeth into him. And Billy Greenbush is doing his best, you know, fighting this fucking thing, you know, it's, and but the gore is great. You see like a back shot of him with you know the critter you know chewing on him, and you see the blood you know oozing into his his uh bowling shirt, which is really cool because it's like a light blue, so you can see the blood contrast on it. 
but it cuts from seeing Jay struggle to seeing um, D. Wallace and Scott Grimes yelling and screaming. Um, and then you see their point of view looking down the stairs, and you just see Jay's flashlight going back and forth and to this intense music, this intense score. So the intensity, you know, I just said that three fucking times, is well done. Really, really good. Um, and then when the bounty hunters finally show up, and they just go ape shit shooting these gigantic, um, they look kind of like proton packs mixed with vacuum cleaners, but the front is like a literally like a fucking cannon. So they're destroying everything in sight, trying to get the critters. So, I mean, and then it's just, um, it's like a game of cat and mouse, which is also great. Um, yeah, um, such a fun, fun movie. Um, I have, couldn't, I honestly could not tell you how many times I've seen this. And of course, you know, they have a little bit of comedy. Um, this came out after Gremlins. So, of course, everyone who loves Gremlins loves the scene where the Gremlins get drunk at the bar. So they have a little uh, comedy scene thrown into Critters where the Critters are actually in the house. And it's mainly in Brad's bedroom. Uh, the family's gotten away at the moment. And it's the Critters trying to figure out, you know, our stuff. You know, our life. You know, the Earthlings, I mean. And you have two critters on the bed, and they're wondering what the pillows are, and they bite the pillows, and they rip all the feathers around, and they enjoy that, so they're going crazy. And then you have one critter, who seems like the leader of the pack, he's talking to a stuffed E.T. doll, and he's talking to him in, you know, I guess, critter ease, whatever. Excuse me. But you got the subtitles, and he's asking E.T., who are you, where are you from, blah, blah, blah. And he keeps poking E.T., and it's funny because, you know, it's the stuffed animal's not fucking listening to him or answering him. So you hear the critters, the critter yelling at him, and you can tell he's getting frustrated. He keeps poking at him. And it's funny because in, it's, even though it's in critter ease, you kind of tell he's saying, come on, wake up. And it's great. And eventually he gets pissed off and bites the fucking head off the dial and just swings it around. And it's so great. Critters are eating, you know, the fish in the fish tank to a wonderful, fun uh, techno score. So much fun. Um, yeah, I cannot praise Critters enough. Um, I'm probably going to go watch this within the next couple of days again. Um, so much fun. Um, God. I would say this is the perfect fun sci-fi movie for me if it wasn't for, you know, the fact that, um, D. Wallace Stone got annoying at the end. But, uh, and it's great because, you know, spoilers, I already said, but you kind of figure it out right away when you meet Charlie. Charlie's the one that saves the day. He helps... Um, rescue um, Nadine Vanderveld, you know, the, the, the daughter, and, and Scotty Grimes. He helps rescue them from um, the last group of critters as they're flying away. And a great scene. And, um, oh, I didn't mention really Billy Zane. Billy Zane's not really into it too much, but it's cool to see a big-name actor like Billy Zane in a movie like this. He's literally just there for maybe ten minutes to eat dinner with the family, go up to the barn to make out with the daughter, and then get eaten by a critter, which is a really cool um, effect. I mean, he gets, you know, it bites him in the chest, and then he falls down, but good blood-spitting effect, really well done. And it's, again, really cool to see an actor of the caliber of Billy Zane in something like Critters. I mean, he eventually went on to do another horror movie, um, Demon Knight, uh, which is another favorite of mine. And the Uwe Boll, Uwe Boll classic, Blood Rain. Yeah, I know I'm the only one giving it a thumbs up, but he was in that as well. But, um, yeah, Billy Zane is in Critters. And Leonardo DiCaprio is in Critters 3. And Critters 4 stars Academy Award winner Angela Bassett. We'll get to those eventually. So, yeah, in the end, I can, like I said, my boner for this movie is through the fucking roof right now. Um, I don't know how much else I can say to praise it, except go watch this film, or at least watch the trailer, and get an idea of what you're getting into. And you can see, if you just go in there to have fun, enjoy some scares, enjoy a good, uh, a good tension building, some good tension building scenes, fantastic score, likable characters, a good family unit, the acting is great, um, Critters is, is the way to go. So, um... That's it. In the end, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please subscribe. 
Um, check out my older videos if you want. Um, tell your friends, tell your enemies, um, whatever. Um, yeah, so, alright. I got some other uh, ideas coming up. I'm going to do some more cartoon commentaries. Um, keep my vlog going. going. Um, I'll be back to You Hate It, I Don't in a few uh, videos coming up. I have I had put some of that on the back burner for some reason. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Alright, in the end, I'll say cheers. And the next time the town drunk tells you that aliens are attacking, you might want to listen to them.